What's up guys, it's CJ from SmartKTai.com back with another unboxing video. This time we're taking a look at the new Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 Android tablet. This is the latest 2014 edition, not to be confused by last year's model of the same name. As usual, before we begin, let me break down the specs for you guys. The second generation Galaxy Note 10.1 is rocking a 10.1 inch WQXGA super clear LCD display. That's 2560 by 1600 resolution in Exynos 5 Octa processor which is comprised of a 1.9 gigahertz quad core chip plus a 1.3 gigahertz quad core chip. It's also equipped with 3 gigabytes of RAM up to 64 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD expandability, an 8 megapixel rear camera, 2 megapixel front facing camera, an 8220 milliamp hour battery, an improved S Pen stylus, a textured back cover with stitching, and Android 4.3 Jelly Bean with Samsung's custom TouchWiz user experience. So lots of features here. All right, I've been waiting for this tablet for quite a while. I've been waiting to check it out. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, as you can see, we have the uh, familiar packaging made out of recyclable material and it's printed with soy-based ink, just like uh, what we saw with the Galaxy Note 3 and Galaxy S4. So let me go ahead and see, it looks like it's sealed over here. So slice that open other side too All right. there we go and there it is the note 10.1 now I got the uh, 32 gigabyte Wi-Fi model in black but uh it's also available in white and the 32 gigabyte version is priced at $600, 16 gigabyte is $50 less. So let's go ahead and pull the tablet out first. Wow, this feels pretty light in hand. It feels sturdy. Let me push it off to the side. Let's see what else is in here. So we've got our manuals and I believe there's also a uh, gift card for the Google Play Store in here, which is nice. You have your USB to micro USB charge and sync cable with the uh, usual Samsung power brick. Don't need to look at that too long. And then you have some extra nubs for your S Pen and then also a clip. So that's it that's in the box. Put that away and we'll bring the Galaxy Note 10.1 back into the picture here. Looks like we have a protective film on that display. Very nice tablet. Let me go ahead and peel the plastic off of the sides, also the back. There's that textured backing. It's also got the nice stitching around. Very nice upgrade over the uh, glossy plastic we've had with other Samsung devices. All right, let's start with the front. We have a two megapixel front facing camera with the Samsung logo next to it. And below that, the 10.1 inch WQXGA display. So 2560 by 1600 resolution, the same as the Google Nexus 10 uh, by Samsung. And it's a significant bump over the original Galaxy Note 10.1 as well. Moving down to the very bottom, we have a design change over the original Note 10.1. Uh, moving away from, from on-screen buttons, Samsung went with uh, hardware keys, just like their Galaxy smartphones. So you have your physical home button in the middle, sandwiched by back and menu capacitive buttons. Zoom in on that. All right, so let's move to the side. We actually have 3.5 millimeter headphone jack here. And over here is a speaker grill. So your speakers are on the sides now. Uh, no more front facing speaker. It's like on the uh, Galaxy Note 10.1 and the Nexus 10. I have to see uh, what kind of change uh, that entails because I enjoyed the uh, front facing speakers on my Nexus 10. So hopefully it won't 
uh, be too much of an issue. You'll notice we have a chrome plastic look around here. It's not metal or aluminum or anything like that. Uh, that's sort of a cheap look, but uh, it's not too bad. It does look nice for it being uh, plastic. Down here we have our micro USB charge and sync port. Over here we have a micro SD card slot. I like how they have a cover for that that you can flip out. Now, too many tablet manufacturers leave that exposed and it leaves you open to also losing your micro SD card. I've had that happen to me with an older ASUS tablet. Close that up. Above that we have another speaker. And then above that we have our S Pen. So here is the S Pen, the new and improved S Pen supposedly. It's supposed to be more responsive, more efficient, and I believe it has more functionality as well. So I'll go ahead and go over all of that of course. That means I'm going to take a look at the S Note, Action Memo, uh, Scrapbook, ScreenWrite, and Pen Window features. Up at the top we have our IR Blaster so you can actually control your TV with the uh, universal remote feature. And over here we have our volume up and down rocker and power button. Flip to the back. No more uh, plastic here. It's not that glossy plastic. We actually have this uh, faux leather material. It's a textured back. It does feel nice. Uh, I like this a lot over the uh, plastic and previous Galaxy devices. But we'll go ahead and start up here and take a look at the 8 megapixel camera with LED flash. And then you can also see that stylus again over here. So let's take a look around the edges here. You'll see you have this uh, stitched leather look. I can get the camera to zoom. So very nice. I do like this. Hopefully it doesn't get uh, dirty or messed up over uh, regular use over like six months, but I'll have to see how that goes. All right, let's conclude the unboxing with a quick overview of the software. I won't be able to cover everything, so stay tuned for a follow-up video with a detailed software review. I might have to make that uh, a two-parter, but let's start over here with the notification window shade. You can see we have a bunch of togglers up at the top. You can expand those to show even more and then edit to reorder them back out. I'll click show here. Now this is actually a access point for uh, the watch on feature which allows you to control your TV using the watch on app and the IR blaster on the tablet so you can use your Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition as a universal remote and the accompanying software is pretty good as well. It shows your TV guide and everything. Now I have this integrated with a notification shade but you can disable that if you want. I'll go ahead and hide it and we'll go back to the application in a little bit. Uh, let's move on here, swipe around, check out performance. Pretty good and I would hope so considering this tablet has an Exynos 5 Octa processor in it as well as 3 gigabytes of RAM. So let's go ahead and start um, by checking out some S Pen features. So I have the S Pen right here and you can see the button right here if you click on it it pulls up this uh, Air Command feature. So with Air Command you have quick access to various uh, S Pen controlled applications. So we'll start with the first one we have Action Memo and that's obviously going to give you a little memo pad here a little notepad and you can uh, write on it as so. So pretty handy feature you can move that around and resize it as well. I'm going to back out of there, pull the uh, air command feature back up and then we have uh, Scrapbooker. So with Scrapbooker you can actually take uh, content from various apps and then uh, throw them in a scrapbook. So you guys get the basic idea of a scrapbook. Uh, you can do that with uh, anything on your screen as well. So here I have a snippet of my home screen and you can save that. You can put a memo or tag it if you'd like and throw it into the scrapbook. I'm going to discard that. Go back to Air Command and then we have ScreenWrite. This takes a screen capture 
and then you can draw on it. So you can write whatever you want and then save it, you can share it. Uh, I'm going to cancel that, of course. Error command again. Here we have S Finder. Now this is a unified search feature. Uh, very handy. I'm going to go ahead and write... Uh oh, I don't know if it will recognize that. Hey, I have very bad handwriting. As you can see, it did recognize it. Uh, and this will check uh, the system for anything you type in. So I wrote Samsung, and here it showed a, showed a bunch of Samsung apps. Uh, anything I have in my calendar that has to do with Samsung, it even pulls up your bookmarks, emails, and things of that nature. So very useful search feature. I'm going to back out. And then we will go to the final air command feature, which is pen window. So with pen window, you just draw a square or rectangle on the screen, and it pulls up this menu with uh, several applications, and you can go ahead and open them up and it'll pull up YouTube in this case. I'm going to go ahead and load that up and then we'll also do that for another window. Oh, I forgot to draw the uh, square here. And how about we pull up the calculator? So you can see I have YouTube in one window, calculator in another, maybe if you're watching a, uh, a math lecture or something you want to do some homework at the same time. I don't know what kind of scenarios you might want to do, but uh, it could be a useful feature. It is showing some uh, multitasking uh, ability with this tablet, so very nice. I'm going to X out of here. Oh yeah, before I leave this one, let me show you. You can minimize it into this little bubble and navigate wherever you want, whether it's in here or a different home screen or while you're web browsing, and then quickly access it again as so. So you don't have to completely close out of it like that if you want to uh, come back to it in a couple of minutes. All right, moving on, let's go ahead and pull up S-Note. So S-Note is a very handy feature that you're probably going to want to use with this tablet. Uh, it's a note-taking application. You have various templates. For example, here I have a weekly planner template. Let's go ahead and edit this one. Uh, I have to say the uh, S Pen is very precise, uh, very responsive, doesn't seem to lag, uh, maybe just a little bit but not too bad. This is probably the best uh, tablet pen experience I've had to date. I'm very much enjoying it and I can't wait to use it in my uh, daily life. So let's go ahead and back out of here that's one template. Here's another one, just to show you some diversity. You have to edit. Now in landscape it may look a little bit zoomed in, but if you go ahead and switch over to portrait, uh, you'll actually see that it gives you a, a normal sized view. So that's probably what you'll want to do if you're taking a bunch of notes in class. Uh, let's back out. I'm going to discard again. And scrapbook. I mentioned that earlier where you can drop off some of your uh, snippets from various content. Back out of here. Uh, we have Samsung's apps. So this is Samsung's app store. Samsung hub. So you have access to music, whoops, music, video, books, games, uh, basically an entertainment hub. And then watch on. I mentioned this earlier. So this is connected with uh, my uh, cable information. So I can pull up my TV guide without having, having to uh, invade my TV screen. I can find a TV show I want to watch. And then once I find one, I just press watch on TV and it'll flip the channel for me. So very useful feature. There are some uh, other functions here like your favorites, timeline, and searching by genre. And then you have on-demand access as well. So uh, it seems like a good feature. I tested it out for a little bit and it does work well. Uh, and it doesn't seem to lag too much. So once you press a certain channel, it'll go right to that. And then you have your 
remote functions as well. Back out of here, some more TouchWiz features. We have multi-window of course. Now this was useful on the last Galaxy Note 10.1 so let's check it out on the 2014 edition. So if you just take any two apps from here, let's go ahead and how about we pull up YouTube. So we have YouTube in one window, and then we have the uh, web, web browser in another window. Say you want to make one screen larger than the other, you can do that by dragging this bar. If you want to swap them, you can do that as well. You can also uh, switch applications and switch windows, drag and drop certain content. That's only going to work on a limited basis, but say you wanted to drag some text over from one window to the other, or a picture from one, you can do that there. Now, if you wanted to maximize one over the other, you can either come over here and X out of one, or you can actually pull that over. Oops. There we go. And now I'm maximized with the web browser. Quick reminder, you get you do get some rewards for buying the Galaxy Note 10.1. Uh, it says you get $600 in perks, but uh, you're probably going to be most interested in the $50 credit for music movies and TV shows through the Samsung Hub and the $25 uh, Google Play Store credit for games and apps. Very, very handy. Uh, I'll have to check out some uh, new apps and games with, a lot, with all that credit. Let's pull up the uh, keyboard just so you can get a look at that. Uh, now I do have my S Pen out, so it went straight up, straight to handwriting recognition. Uh, you can change that functionality. I have it set to pull up the handwriting recognition, but you can also have it so it always pulls up the keyboard. So Samsung keyboard, you can see it has your number row up at the top, so very convenient. I like their keyboard, it has a lot of different options to choose from. Alright, so that is the web browser. Let's actually pull that back up. Browse the net for a second, show you how that looks. So good performance. You can see it's still loading, but uh, I'm able to move around just fine. Pinch and zoom. All right, back out of there, and how about we check out, let's see here, let's go to the app tray. Now aside from maybe Google Chrome, Google Drive, and a couple games that I downloaded, uh, this is what you get out of the box. So while there are some very useful features, lots of Samsung features, there are some apps that you may not ever use uh, called, you know, you, you refer to them as bloatware, but uh, for those apps, like maybe Screensaver, definitely not going to use that. That's like a demo mode that stores may want to use when they put their uh, units on display. Uh, maybe the uh, Business Week app and New York Times app. Uh, those might not be useful to some of you. So you can also pull up the uninstall and disable apps function. Get rid of those so they're not hogging any resources or valuable real estate on your app tray. You also have access to your widgets here. It'll be interesting if uh, Samsung changes this layout with Android 4.4 KitKat, which should come as an update in the future. Of course, with KitKat, they know Google no longer puts the apps and widgets together. They have them on separate menus. Back out of there, let's swipe over. So we have some of the widgets for Samsung apps. So the Samsung App Store, Samsung Hub, then we have watch on. Over here are some of the widgets for third-party apps that come included on the device. So Bloomberg Business Week, the New York Times, and then Twitter. Uh, in case you're wondering, you can add more home screens by coming over here. And one last feature to cover, if you swipe up from the bottom, uh, you actually get 
a central hub for all your news and updates. So you have uh, various news outlets, you have articles all over the place over here, and you can customize that to show uh, your interests. If you swipe over, personal information, so calendar, uh, S Note, and scrapbook apps will be shown there. Here now, you can see it has uh, travel and food. Then social media, you can link your accounts so that you can be updated here as well. So it gives you one place to see all your updates throughout the day. Uh, I can see that being useful for many people. I probably won't use it much though, but uh, it's there if you need it. And again, you can just swipe up from the bottom of the screen and you get that neat little animation. Let's actually uh, tap on one here. Go back out. Maybe a news item. Let's go ahead and pull this up. And it looks like it's connected with Flipboard, which is also preloaded on the device, obviously. You can tell by the animation. Also, if you look down here, you have access to Google Now, of course. Alright guys, so this was the unboxing and first look video for the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 24 edition Android tablet. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm just going to close out the video showing you some gaming performance. This is Dead Trigger 2 running on Samsung's Exynos 5 Okta chipset. You can see performance is very good. Looks great on the uh, high resolution screen. Alright, so I'll see you in the next video. I'll uh, close out the video like I said just by playing this game a little bit so you can see how it performs.